you have your Bibles this morning, come with me back to the book of Proverbs. It is in the third chapter. I think this will be my last one for this month. Um, put God first. Put God first. Put God first. Proverbs, third chapter. I'm going to look at the verse 9 and 10. I think our focus will be right around verse 9. I'm picking it up from the New King James uh, reading. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns may be filled with plenty, and your vats shall overflow with new wine. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. I've been talking for the last three Sundays, four Sundays, three Sundays, about put God first. Put God first. And I'm thankful and I'm believing the Lord that you that are listening to this word and acting upon that word, that you'll see the results of his return in your life. There should be not a um, needful desire of return as if you're putting in and expecting something right back out as if you're, but there is an investment in kingdom. God, you, you honor God. We honor God when we give and then when we sow our seed, sow our time and sow our talent. We honor the Lord because we're saying back to him that I would not have this if you didn't give it to me. So I gladly want to give it back to you. As I said last week, I know this is an elementary lesson to many of you who are been in the kingdom, are been in church for a long time. Giving is, is basic to you now. You're giving on 20% tithing. You're giving over and above. You're matured in your giving. But to many of you, it's, it sounds like because it's not hitting your, 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 your spiritual conscience yet. And um, in the book of Hosea, he says that you think you're getting away, but he says you'll have holes in your bag. Um, and what you store up, stuff starts breaking down. And now you have to pay it out to fix it back up. And you think you're getting away from being responsible. You, you, you can't get away from responsibilities to the Lord. Amen? I remember my, bit, my grandmother, Tommy House, who lived in the projects, and I would... At nine years old, I would go by and clean her house and work with her and stay with her because she had a stroke, but she had a stroke on one, on her, one side of her body. Um, so she was handicapped in some sense, um, but all points intended, even being a lady that did not have a substantial large income, she always gave. Gave of her time, gave of her resources, and gave to the house of the Lord and taught me how to give. It was a blessing to see that even and of her, out of her little and her lack, she still gave. Some of you have not that testimony. You have great abundance. God has blessed you. You have storehouses. Some of you do not have abundance, and you're operating from a lean place. And that's a good place to be because now you move God's hand as you sow and give. You move him to bless you even more. Others give out of their abundance. Remember the woman with the two mites? And she gave out of her lack or her, her, her minimal that she had, and God still blessed her. I asked someone, I, asked, I put in this uh, out to you all, uh, to our website, for you to send in your testimonies. I want to hear your testimonies about how the Lord has been blessing you since you've been started out this year giving. And a few testimonies came in, but one, Yvette um, Mad, Mad, Madden, Madden, she wrote back and said, let's give God a raise. And I said, I like that. I'm going to use that in my message, message this morning. Let's give God a raise. In her letter of her testimony, she says she, she's a, an executive at one of the hotels, and she learned about tithing and sewing and giving. And she also is a professional hair uh, braider, a, a stylist. But she was giving from her corporate job. But as she started on her, her second job, her second uh, place of employment, she looked up and her goal was to make $1,000 a week. And God blessed her and before she knew it, she had to repent, she said, because I was getting extra money braiding hair and forgot to tithe to the Lord. But as soon as she turned around and started tithing on that business, she said, now I can't keep up with it. It's more than I can handle because it will overtake you, amen? Another gentleman wrote in, he says that I'm a retired, I said, I'm retired, I'm a senior, he said, but I tithe on what I get, whatever comes in, even on my retirement. He said, I said, I want to continue to see the blessing in my life, 
and the enemy not uh, 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 coming into my fields to destroy my fruit before it's time. He said, so I tithe on what I give. So if you don't do it, somebody else will. God will raise up someone and bring them in this building and they will give for the purpose of the kingdom and that's the way it is. Look at your neighbor and say, the Bible says, the poor he'll have with you always. They weren't talking about me. I want to hear some more of your testimonies. Please send them in. Let me, let me marinate on them because I'm praying for God to show and shine in your life as you sow. Uh, one of our ministers uh, texted me and she said that I gave, I stretched out and gave a $50 seed because I was in a, just in need of being obedient to sow a gift. I gave a $50 seed, got home, and Monday received an unexpected check for $592. So you just can't beat God. He's already working. Give and it shall be given to you. The measures of verses down, shaken together, and running over. Malachi 3 lets us see that when we give, we prove God. As you give, you prove God. Malachi 3, just read the context, 1 through 10. You prove God. He says, prove me now and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you will not have room enough to receive. Amen? Amen. Raise your right hand and say, Lord, pour out out. blessings Blessings. in my life life. that I will not not have room enough enough to receive. receive. But to do that is more than just saying that, it's to prove God. So take what you have and give. Give as unto the Lord. And he says, I'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you will not have room enough to receive. Um, Elder Greg, I, I was chasing the windows of heaven and I went to Genesis and see that the deeps of the waters opened up and then the heavens opened up and it was a deluge of water that came down and flooded the whole earth. I want you to walk in a deluge blessing where the windows of heaven will open up and just run every blessing in your life you need. Amen. Living under an open heaven because I'm obedient to God. If we recap our context of our message of, of, of um, Proverbs and we tie it to Hagar uh, 2 and 8, Hagar says in 2 and 8, this is a, the very nature of God, that everything belongs to God. Hagar, everything belongs to God. Lord, all of the silver is yours, the gold is yours, and that is real. Everything belongs to God. So therefore, we tithe, and as we tithe, we tithe unto the Lord. Tithe is a tenth of what you give to the Lord. There is also almsgiving, there is also first fruits, and there is offering. Offering is free will offering. You give as God has blessed you. Amen? In 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, particularly, the purpose of giving. Let's go through that a little bit, and I won't be too long in this this morning. In 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, second verse, second verse, the purpose of giving is this. Now concerning the collection of the saints as I have given orders to the churches of Galat, so you must do also. Paul was moving about as his missionary work was and was collecting funds from other progressive churches to help those that were in need. So the Corinthian church had all the gifts moving through it, but Paul said, here is one I want you to bring up and elevate. And that is your gift of giving. The collection was concerned and was concerning the saints. All saints, raise your hand and wave at me. I'm, I'm a saint. I'm a, I'm a believer. Good. So the collection was concerning the saints. The work of the ministry here is being presented. And the strategy here is for you to understand the need. The purpose of giving is here stated and how to give the saints should know in verse 2 on the first day of the week that each one of you lay of your late lay something aside and storing up as he may preserve that there be no collection when i come paul was saying the saints take what they have and lay it to the side And when they come to the church, they bring that they've laid aside for the house of the Lord. But I know that you know that I know. 
if I don't get rid of it real quick, I just lay it aside and say, I'm taking this to the church. Before I know it, what? Hold on, let me preach this. I got this. <laughs> it's Thursday, and somebody's gonna run in and need something a, a game, a, a put something on my, uh, something's gonna happen. And I'm gonna go in and say, well, I'm just gonna just take a little bit out of it, but I'm gonna put it back. Because, because Sunday is coming. Strangely enough, when Sunday comes, I don't have all that I should have that I put aside for the Lord. I used it. Amen? It's a sad place to be when I purposed it for that. I have a little thoughts running through my mind, but um, it's, it's somewhat traumatizing when you said, I purposed this for this. And now it's time for me to do this, and I can't do it. Um, I grew up in a house... And we have this thing called layaway. <laughs> Kenny, do you know nothing about this girl? You don't know about this. And the traumatic thing of layaway was everybody would go to the store, get your own basket, go on down every aisle, get everything you think you want, put it in your basket, and bring it back up front. We would be in the store for an hour. Basket down every hour. I'm wearing this. Take it back to the counter. The lady look at it. Strangely enough, there was no room behind the counter for another basket. Because everybody else believed in layaway. Put it to the side. And mom would say, okay, we're going to get this out as soon as dad get paid. That basket and everything in it is still at the store. And what I did get were a pack of t-shirts, some blue jeans, and a coat. So you're going to make it all the way through school and summer school with this right here. And if you grow too tall, you're going to get them hand me. So when you put something aside, it breaks your heart when it doesn't come to pass. Mom wasn't trying to break her heart. She promised to get this stuff out of layaway. And we put something on it for layaway. And it was laid. Okay. But the first day of the week is going to come. And this is the first day of the week. This is your art Sunday. And it's, on that first day of the week, every person in, in this text was saying that it should be systematic weekly giving. And we give and we get. And we become better aware of our stewardship. I got to make sure I set it aside. <clears throat> and make sure that I bring it to where I'm supposed to bring it. You ever sent in a partial car payment? I'm just... And he called them and said, listen, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to bring the rest in a little later on. But right now, y'all hold on to this and I'll get the rest of it in. Mm -hmm. A partial house note. You know, I'm just going to put a little bit down on a couple hundred dollars. Y'all know, I know I owe you 16, but y'all just hold on. And you pull up to your house or to your apartment. It's like, what? I said, I'm going to get the rest of the money. And it's, no, no, we didn't want it all. You, you promised to pay the full amount. We want it all. And you can't get away with that. Not long. And you can't hide that car, but so long. <laughs> Every week we have something to give. We're stewards and we set it to the side. First Corinthians 16, 2, the place to give. Everyone lay by himself a store for the store. We lay it aside for the store, for the assembly of the church house. Malachi 3 and 10, bring all tithes into the storehouse. It comes to the church. Amen? That there may be food or meat or provisions in my house. The participants, the participants in this giving in 1 Corinthians 16 and 2 is everyone. Everyone should be a part of this. Can you imagine Every person in her working, making the minimum of 30000 a year, and you decided, I'm going to support the church with this every week, my percentage. We would pay this church off, that off, this off, and we'll be on our way doing greater mission work if everybody would participate 
in this. It's equal sacrificing, not equal giving. Amen. Some of you remember when you were making only seven, twelve, eight dollars an hour, fifteen, sixteen dollars an hour. Some of you are doing that now, but some of you remember those lean days when you just barely had enough to get by, and God began to increase you, and increase you, and now you're doing better off. Easier to tithe when I'm only making $12 an hour. Here you go, Lord. But now I'm making $120 an hour. And I see that come in. Like, I don't know about this. It must be a hustle going on. No. It's the same tenth. Same tenth. You just got an increase. What if the Lord asked you, asked me to ask you, for to make it easy for you to tithe, I'm going to take you back to $11 an hour. And let you live on that. Who would want to do that? Raise your hand so I can pray for you. For the Lord to take you back to $11.50 an hour. Now some are there now. But that's where you started. Raise your hand and say, I'm worth more than that, Reverend. I ain't no $11.50. $11. Now I ain't knocking it. But somebody have to work that. Amen. <laughs> equal sacrifice is not equal giving. Move Clinton. So David said in his sacrifice in 2 Chronicles 24, 24, Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God, 2 Chronicles 24, 24, sacrifice. That which doeth cost me nothing. David would have to buy a field because he had sinned against the Lord and he had to offer up sacrifice. So he went to the man that owned the field and says, the man knew he was the king, David. He says, you can have the field. David said, no. I would not offer to the Lord anything that does not cost me something. So David bought the field for 50 shekels of silver. First Chronicles 12, I think it is, First Chronicles 21, says the field was worth more than that. 50 shekels of silver. David has to look at the, the cost of the estimation of that whole field. And also the temple was over $120,000. And he paid for it just to offer sacrifice. Because they didn't want to give God something that didn't cost him anything. So giving is a sacrifice. But it's yet systematically and it's cheerful. It's responsive. It's out of the loving heart and the loving heart is turned towards God and everyone is to participate in this. Amen? Acts 20, 35, I have shown, I've shown you, Paul is speaking of his labor, Acts 20 and 35. I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is not found in study where Jesus said this, but perhaps somewhere by a campfire or somewhere hanging out with the disciples. He was looking at the sowing and giving and he started to think about, for God so loved the world that he gave his all, only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So life, so it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. How many of you like to receive good things? Yeah, yes, nobody likes to receive bad things. Let me ask you again, because some of you didn't find your hand. Show of hands. How many like to receive good things? Yes. But somehow Jesus says it's better to give. The power is in the giving, not in the receiving. You will be blessed to be a giver, not just a receiver. It's more blessed, more happy to give than it is to receive. I will make you the lender, not the borrower. Oh, my God. Can I ask you a question I've been pondering, um, uh, just pondering? Um, don't go off on me. I watched this guy, LeBron James, play basketball like he broke. This boy diving on the floor, running up the balls, just going crazy. Just, just going at it. I'm looking at the game, said, the boy's a billionaire. But he's playing basketball like a broke air. I'm looking at these guys, 100 million in three years, to some crazy number off the chart. I wonder how I would preach. <laughs> uh, 
Rodney, come on. I wonder how, I wonder just how. I wonder how you would walk in church knowing you got 60, 70 million dollars sitting up in the bank. You wouldn't walk in, there's another Sunday. Oh Lord, here I come. You would walk in here, man, like you own the place. Like, what's wrong with y'all? What's wrong with y'all? Ain't y'all happy? The loudest person in the church should be the brokest or the richest. You should be thanking God, I'm on my way to a wealthy place or I'm there in a wealthy place. Amen. Shout out bomb fist. Somebody said, I'm going to start living my best life. I'm, God's is about to bring me into a wealthy, wealthy place where it's blessed to give than it is to receive. We are to behave ourselves in the house of God as Christians, as saints of God. We ought to behave ourselves in the house of God as saints. The house of God is not Clinton's house. It's God's house. And if you lived anywhere near in your mama's house or your daddy's house, they will let you know it ain't your house. Turn my TV off. Matter of fact, turn the lights off. No, you know what? I'm taking the TV out the room. We grew up with one TV in the living room and everybody had to wait and wait and wait. Now you got a TV in every room or you got a device everywhere. No, I'm not getting you no iPhone. Get your own. <laughs> it's something when you know whose house it is. Amen? Raise your right hand and say, it's God's house. And I need to know how to obey and behave in God's house. Romans 12, 12, 12 and 13. Romans 12, 12 and 13. Rejoicing in hope. I'm, I'm, it starts at verse 9 in Romans 12 and it goes down, but I'm cutting it right into the body of this. Romans 12, 12 and 13. It said, we are to rejoice in hope with expectation, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. That's how you behave in God's house. Distributing to the necessity of the saints and giving to hospitality. That's just, it goes on down with other rich things in God's house. Amen? Amen? We rejoice with expectation, hope. You don't rejoice with doubt. You rejoice with, I'm expecting God to do what he said. You praise him in advance. And when you're going through, don't look and act like you're going through. You're patient in tribulations. I'm going to endure till I come out of this. My better days are in front of me because God's got a plan for my life. It won't always be like it is right now. Continuing instant in prayer. Look at somebody say, go up in prayer. Instantly, when things start going wrong, just fall on your knees and begin to pray. Walk around your house and declare and decree God you said according to your word. No weapon formed against me going to prosper. Sickness not come nigh my dwelling. I believe for breakthrough overcome in the name of Jesus. Raise your hand and say, I'm touching and agreeing. Blessing and receiving. Your generosity and giving not only builds the church account and the church's storehouse. Your generosity and giving brings the church opportunity to do money with mission. You can go further with mission. With money, you can do more things. Money with a mission. Not only does it build this church's account, but it also builds your account. Philippians 4, 17, 19. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. I'm reading from the NIV. I want more in your account. And the way you get more in your account, you start in the storehouse. You take care of God's business. He'll take care of your business. Philippians 4, 17, 18, NIV. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am, apply, I am aptly supplied 
now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. This is Paul talking to the church of Philippi. They, they, they brought him these wonderful blessings and gifts. <clears throat> they are a fragrant offering and acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. Acceptable sacrifice. Acceptable sacrifice. Something that pleased God. You can tell when God moves by what you give. Because you feel the sacrifice. Here is a sacrifice. Your friend lives in North Las Vegas. And you live at Mountain's Edge. And they could call Uber Lyft or anybody. But they call you. and say, would you please come get me and take me to work down at the strip? You think about it. And because you're so blessed, you know what I'm going to do? Because technology is so wonderful. I'm going to send you a lift. That's what I'm going to do. You're going to ride by yourself. I'm, I'm going to send you an Uber right now. You know what? Hold on. Hold on just a second. I got you covered. I got you. Click, 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 click. Is he there yet? Is he there? All right. Go. No, go. He'll, he'll take you back if you want. Okay, hold on. Let me just do two drops. Two drops here. I'm going to drop you off, wait for you, and take you back. Isn't that wonderful? I helped him out. Was it a sacrifice? No. It was an easy way out because I was able to let somebody else do it. That metaphor leads to now you and I. You come in, you look at your neighbor, look, they're gonna be asked to turn that neighbor stuff and clap and shout, go and take care of that for me. <laughs> I didn't come for all that. I, I, I just came in to just, just check out what's going on, you know. Really, what really happened was I was out eating dinner and I saw somebody say, ooh. And I spoke and they said, ooh. I said, what church you go to? I don't go to church. What church you go to? I go to Mountaintop. Where's that located? Over there on Yale Street. I mean, on, on Lindale Street. Uh, what time y'all start? Oh, nine. So you came in, and you've been sitting there, ignoring my message, looking around the room. Ah! Wondering, have you seen her? dun 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 Okay. The offering must be a sacrifice. Amen. Cain and Abel told us about the sacrifice in the book of Genesis, the fourth chapter. Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice because Abel, he gave God what he was asking for. Cain sacrificed his offering. He gave to the Lord what he wanted to give, the fruits of the ground. God says, Cain, I told you what to bring me. I asked you to do this, and it's the how you gave it and the way you gave it. I want you to give it from your heart and give it with the heart of compassion. I want you to sacrifice what you give. And by doing this, Paul says in Philippians 4, we build our account. And here's how you build your account in Philippians 4 and 19. And my God will meet every, all your needs according to his riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. I'm reading from the NIV. But can I read it again? It's just something leaped inside of me. If I do this, Pastor House, you mean to tell me my God will meet all of my needs according to Bank of Nevada, Bank of the West, B of A? Uh-uh. According to his riches that are in glory. So let every one of us give, make up in our minds on how we're going to give and what we're going to give and when we're going to give it and where we're going to give it. That is purpose in our heart that we'll do this consistently and every week. We'll give because God has given to us and we'll put God first. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you how the story goes. I think 30 seconds and I'll be done. The story goes like this. In putting God first, I promise you will come out on top. Psalm 66, verse 5. Come and see what God has done. NIV, I'm reading Psalm 66, 5 to 12. He's awesome deeds for mankind. He turned the sea into dry land. We passed through the waters on foot. Come and let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watches the nations. Let not the rebellious raise up against him. Come, praise our God, all peoples. 
Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver and brought us into prison, laid heavy burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out to a place of abundance. Look to your left and tell somebody, you don't look like what you've been through. All that you had to endure, all that the enemy tried to do to you, every plan and every attack, your account was so built up when that devil came, he says, you got too much in storage. God is too in favor of you. Because everything you do, you do it as unto the Lord. A storehouse in this house and a storehouse in your house. When you put God first, you will come out on top. Give God a praise in the house. Shake one hand, tell them, search all over. Couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than thee. Search high and low. Couldn't find them. Couldn't find them. I'm in the right church. Let me hear some church people say, mm, mm, mm. Nobody like Jesus. He's faithful. Even when we're foolish, he's faithful. Hallelujah. Hold your hands up. Father, I bless you for this word. I pray that throughout this month and throughout this year that we will continue to be faithful to you. Putting you first in everything. In all my ways, I will acknowledge you, that you would direct my path. We plan, oh God, you direct our steps. Thank you that my steps are ordered. Thank you that you have guided me even to this moment. I believe your word. I trust you with everything I have. Let me be faithful in all that I do and put you first in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Be seated for a moment. Um, Elder Greg, can I get you to come up for a second? I want you to break down that time. We owe God. That's still, I don't want to mess it up. We have a microphone there, Dr. Francis. Elder Greg was ministering yesterday in our um, um, leadership kickoff. And um, it was a very powerful session. All of our speakers were phenomenally great in all they said. Amen. And I've been speaking to you about time, talent, and, and treasure time. But Elder Greg is going to give you something that's going to just, just go ahead, Elder Greg. Tell us about your time. Well, praise God. Um, you know, we struggle in life when it comes to giving God something. And it's basically what we're supposed to give Him. Because when we woke up this morning, that was life He poured into us. So we give to God in time, talent, and treasure. I'm up here to talk about the time portion of it. Because when I talk to people and they say, what did you give God? Well, I don't have anything to give Him. You got time. And the thing is, God gives you 168 hours every week. And if you follow the instruction of tithing, we owe God 10% of that 168 hours, which comes down to roughly 17 hours a week. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand to see how many of y'all give him 17 hours a week. That's about 2.4 to uh, 2.5 hours a day. How many hours have you given him so far? 
just this hour and a half we've been here, right? Did you pray when you got up this morning? Did you read your Bible when you got up this morning? Are you going to pray when you go to sleep tonight? Are you going to witness to somebody as you go through your day? As you do that, start taking a journal and adding up those minutes to see if it adds up to 2.5 hours. If it doesn't, we are robbing God. Serious. You are robbing God because he is giving you life and that life consists of 168 hours every week and we can't give him 17. When God calls for you to do something, you start backing up because you don't want to be seen doing what God has asked you to do. So get out your notebooks this week. As you go through each day, add up the time that you give God. And at the end of the week, when we come here next Sunday, we might ask you to raise your hand if you gave him 17 hours. And I guarantee you, more than half of you will have failed. Because I fail sometimes. 17 hours. You watch TV. You get on social media. You do all everything that you can do, except think about God in the course of your day. So we're going to do that. Are we going to do that? Yeah. Amen then. Let's Thank get it you done. So much. Thank you. How many hours does it take to be in a beauty shop to get your hair done? N normal, just normal. Two and a half hours? Hour. An hour? Minimum? Just wash and set. Still four hours, two hours. How long does it take to do an 18 course of golfing? Four hours, yeah, four hours. Five, five hours, whoa. Um, um, I'm looking for a scripture. I gotta, I gotta get, out of, get out of here. I think it's in Psalms. Where's this Psalms? Psalms, 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 Psalms. 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 What's the long Psalms? 119. 119. And I think it's, it's verse, um, ah, there it is. Look at Psalms 119 and verse 64. Psalms 119, verse 64. And I'm done. If you, if you want to come to the altar for prayer, come down. I'm going to pray over you. Whatever your needs are, just come down. Psalm 6, 119, and what did I say? 164. 164, I'm sorry, 164. Yeah. Psalms 119 and Scripture 164. Come for prayer quickly, come quickly. What does it say? Can we read it in the atmosphere? One, well, how many translations y'all got? Let's go with King James. Our new King James. Okay, one, two, three, read out. Okay, seven times a day, I'm going to praise him. Come quickly for the prayer because of your righteous judgment. How many think God did right by you? Righteous judgment. Okay, so seven times a day, I should praise him because he did right by me. His righteous judgment. So all throughout the day, Complaint should not be on my list of things to do. But praise should be in my mouth seven times a day. A lot of praising going on. A lot of praise happening because of God's righteous judgment. Come quickly, get up under this prayer. If you're sitting, just stand with me real quick. So we're going to pray and we're going to have our pooper coordinator come. And they're going to move from this space to our homes of restable. So I said, put God first. Say it with some authority. Put God first. Put God first. Yeah. You'll be blessed. You'll be blessed all the days of your life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things will be added. Added and do it consistently. I go to work. I put in my 40 hours wherever my job is at. I have my own business. But when it comes to the church, I can't even serve a month out of the year. But I can come 
Y'all better be glad I'm here. And we are glad that you're here. But God saved you to serve, to be a witness. Amen. If I'm speaking to you, wave at me. So you're talking to me, Reverend. You, you, you got my attention. Because your face is telling me that my own. <laughs> it's okay. Whose house is this? <laughs> how, remember, how many of you remember Big Mama's house? You didn't cut up there. You didn't go by too many times. I remember one time I gave, I gave my grandmother a card for her birthday. I thought I'd done something just fantastic. I said, happy birthday, Granny. She opened it up and dropped it on the floor. I said, what's your birthday? She said, don't never give me a card. Don't put no money in it. <laughs> okay, what you got? Put something in it. <laughs> okay. Father, we bless you for these hearts that are at this altar and these that are standing in this room. We come for various reaches and various needs. Father, we pray that you meet us at our point of reach. Strengthen my family, strengthen my heart, stabilize my instabilities. Cause me to trust you even in the midst of this season that I am in. I'm on my way. I'm speaking abundance in apparent lack. But the preacher said that you'll supply every need, God will, according to his riches in glory. So I trust your word that I am divinely set up for a miracle that only you can do. Jesus, I give it to you. I cast my burdens and my cares up on you because you care for me. You said if I do this and submit all to you, according to Matthew 6, you will reward me openly. And this morning, today, I receive my open reward. Jesus, if you gotta show somebody off, show me off. What the enemy meant for the evil, turn it to my good. Bless me in the city when I come and when I go. Strengthen my heart in the name of Jesus. I receive my blessing. Come on, open your mouth, move your lips. I receive my blessings. I receive my abundance. I receive my breakthrough. Today is the beginning of the best for the rest of my life. I thank you, Jesus. It did not end the way the devil thought. Because better is the end of anything than the beginning. I thank you. Come on, let your mouth open up. Lord, I thank you. This is making me stronger, making me better, making me wiser. It was good for me that I had to go through it. Because I'm coming out on the other side. I'm coming out on top. Put that in the atmosphere. I'm coming out on top. I'm coming out on top. I'm coming out on top. Oh. Hallelujah. Shake three hands, tell them, welcome to the great escape. You know you couldn't have got out of that without the Lord. He made a way out of no way. He is the door and the way maker. Hallelujah. God bless you. May return back to your seats. God bless you. I know.